Guru Kripa Kevar. Namaste and welcome everyone to Satsang today. Sadhguru Shri Muji Baba Ki Jai. Jai. change there are no hands up today. <laughs> I'm presuming you're presuming what I'm going to ask. Which is, how do you know? <laughs> There is a hand. Okay, let's go to Madalena. <laughs> Thank you, Father. J. Krishna. Um, I'd like to check something with you. Um, and it's part of my practice. So... when I sit with myself and try to observe the mind, I, I'd like to, I, I'd actually like to sit with you for five minutes and see if the place I'm observing from is the right one. Okay, okay, let's look at this. This is a good, good way to start satsang. So, you say your practice is to try and sit and see if you can observe the mind and you'd like to take five minutes to do it together to see if you're observing in the right way. Yes. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, so what's the report now? Um, what could be the wrong way? Maybe that is simpler. What are we checking exactly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm checking my beingness, I guess. You're checking your beingness? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Can I go away? No. It takes a bit of time to relax into it and let the mind for the mind to not seem that attractive. Is that how, how you say? For the mind to yeah, or for for the one I take myself to be not to be so attracted to the exercise and try to prove something or try to 
Wow. Okay. <laughs> too fast. I'm too slow. For so, for the one that you take yourself to be, you see, to do something or not do something, but that one doesn't exist. True. But It comes and goes. The, uh, well, <laughs> if you took yourself to be uh, a frog, no, does the frog come and go, or does your taking yourself to be the frog come and go? I feel like this is a very relevant point. Like we may have the idea that the person it comes and goes. You see, person was here and the person goes. You see, but no, the person is only what we take ourselves to be. So if you take yourself to be a unicorn, then the unicorn doesn't come and go. Your taking yourself to be the unicorn comes and goes. Yes. You see, but even if you take yourself to be the unicorn. That non-existent unicorn. How many steps can it walk? Well, it walks every day. <laughs> I have a pedometer, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that's the, the right answer to the question. No, it's good. That's what. In fact, thank you for saying that because that's what most of us end up doing. We are measuring the level of personhood that we still have based on some apparent symptoms of that personhood. So, with the pedometer, you can never measure the steps of the unicorn, but you are measuring actually what seems like or feels like there must be the unicorn there. And this is the subtle difference between reality and appearance. You see, so if we keep going on, it seems like and it feels like, then we are back to the realm of oh. I have never seen the unicorn, but, but it seems like it must be there, you see, or it feels like it must be there. And every time it feels like, I keep measuring that and saying, "Oh, there's still so much person here. There's so much problem here. There's so much ego here." But I mean it quite literally. The person is as existent as the unicorn in front of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So don't take it to be poetic or metaphorical. It is very literally the person is as real as the as the unicorn that you perceive in front of you now. You see, maybe even less real because the minute I say that, you may start perceiving unicorns. <laughs> Okay, so let's return to where we started. So, your being is apparent here now, or does it feel effortless? My, my being is apparent. My being is uh, the one without the effort. The effort belongs to the unicorn. Exactly. Very good. Very good. So effortlessly, it is apparent. And many times I say this that if you're taking effort, you're going in the wrong direction. You're using the wrong instruments. Yes. Yes. So now you will you will perceive in some way, which is difficult to pinpoint and say: Is it perceived as a sound? Is it perceived as an image? But you will perceive thoughts. You see, you will perceive thoughts which are proposing. A, a reality which has nothing to do with your reality, mm. which is proposing something which what you find effortlessly has nothing to do with that. True, and I also know sometimes you know it's like there is no space for the two. Like once you're in the effortless. The effort disappears. Yes, yes, but uh, try not to know. <laughs> Good point. The idea of this is not to come up with the most magnificent conclusions. Mm -hmm. The idea of this is to be empty of everything, all knowledge. 
Krishna can have it? Don't know. <laughs> It's a human condition to not want what is effortlessly available. <laughs> or let's call it an egoic condition or a mental condition to not want that which is effortlessly available. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is why spiritual seeking can seem like such a difficult thing. Actually, it is effortless. So for the mind to accept effortlessness is impossible. And as long as we keep valuing the mind as if it is giving us value, valuable positions, till then to accept what is effortlessly available can seem like such a task, it can seem like such a state that we have to hold on to. And it's very important as we start with some today that I want to point out, as I'm saying, I've also noticed the human condition. So I want to point to everyone, embrace what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. See? Otherwise, you will go back from satsang, just reinforcing some beliefs that you have, and you may miss what you actually need to hear in satsang. See? So when we talk about openness, it is openness to that which we don't want to hear, maybe even more than that which we want to hear. Because that which we hear, mostly we already think we know. I, I, I have also been aware of this recently. Yes. If you, you hear something and it confirms the paradigm in your own head. Yeah. The thinking, oh, satsang is so valuable, I confirm that, but that's... Yeah your own identity with the spiritual seeker who's trying to get somewhere. Exactly. Very good. Very good. Okay, so what do we need to observe the mind for? <laughs> to be at peace, I think. <laughs> yeah. And without observing the mind, or without not observing the mind, without either position. Can you repeat that? I'm missing without, something. Without deciding I'm going to observe the mind, or deciding I'm not going to observe the mind, without deciding either way. The one who makes this decision is going to be the mind. See, that's what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying first. So, Without those, without either of those decisions, you see, what is there? Just being. Yes. Now, in just being, is there an attempt to do something or to, or to figure out how to be at peace or any of that? No. Any attempt, it comes from the effort. Yes. Yes. So, can we live like this? Um, I hope so. <laughs> I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, to live like this, to be empty of notions, to be empty of mental constructs, which means only that we don't value them, not that they don't show up. To be headless or 
to live in the heart, whatever sounds better for you. Now, uh, if the mind says, but what about the self? Uh. But what about self-realization? What about God? I want to ask you and see if the answer can come from the heart. I want to ask you, when you are open and empty like this, when you are notionless like this, are you just a bundle of perceptions? Or is it apparent to you that there is more than just per perceptions here? There is more. There is more. You see, so that which is beyond perceptions, you are not perceiving that obviously, isn't it? And yet you know that in your heart. This is intuitive knowledge. Okay, I'll go slowly. I realized I went very fast. So, to s most of you were nodding when I said, "Is there just a set of perceptions?" Or is there something beyond that? Now, how to how to recognize that which is beyond perceptions? You obviously could not be perceiving that. You see, so you're not perceiving that. So that is intuitive insight. That which you know without needing to perceive, without needing to think. So let's, let's do this again because I feel like it's very helpful. As you are fully relaxed, open and empty, tell me if there is something more to you than just the perceptions you are perceiving. You don't have to define what that more is. You don't have to make conclusions, nothing. Just tell me if there is anything more to you. There is more. There is more. Very good. Very good. You see, and this is universal. This is universal. Anyone can look at this and answer this question. So, that which is more or beyond perception, how is that known? It can obviously not be perceived, isn't it? Correct. So, so to know that is self knowledge, is intuitive insight, is Atma Gyan. Atma Darshan, whatever word you want to use, is just this. It's as simple as that. Now, what will happen if we go on a project to say that this which is beyond perception, I need to make it be seen objectively. I need to find an experience of it. How, how will that work out for us? It's not because any experience of perception is perceived. It's going to be perceived, and that which is beyond perception, from our intuition, we can we can say that that will remain unchanged no matter what perception appears. So, this is the simplest way to recognize yourself. Self realization is this apparent. Okay, let's let's dive further into this. That which is beyond perception, you see. Mm -hmm. Are you apart from that? Are you separate from that? No. In fact, if you were to again stay with the heart and speak from there. If you were to take a call and say, what is more primal to me? What is more intimate to me? Is it perceptions or is it this? This is more intimate. Yes, beautiful. And intimate is just a word that we have to use, although there is no distance. So intimacy can still imply some distance, but what we're trying to say is that 
what is stable what is unchanging what is untouched no matter what is perceived independent of that so this is more primal now is there any way in which this is different from what you are and i hope none of you are visualizing if you are visualizing then notice that that is also perceived and notice if there is something more to you than that visual that you are visualizing mm. that which is beyond perception that which witnesses these perceptions is it not our own selves or is it something separate which we have ownership over mm. distance from Doing very well. Stay with the heart. Stay with your intuitive insight and allow that to speak the words. Very good. so can we make a deal today and say for satsang today we will represent that the most primal aspect of myself and not the ephemeral not the changing aspect not the perceivable phenomenal aspect because that would be a true representation isn't it of course and when i spoil it by saying it's impossible to represent that but but uh, but at least it is better than representing the faults that song will be very silent today <laughs> yes <laughs> now is there anything that you have to hold on to here are you doing this with your attention Mm, it's a good question. No, I feel my attention can go to something else, but right now. Very good. And also, can attention go to the unperceivable? Um. Mm -mm. because we are talking about that subtlety where even to make the attempt to direct our attention would be effort you don't even need to do that that effortless everyone with me then mm. are we doing this with our attention no 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 so it is that effortless that even the attempt to direct attention would be taken to be too much effort it's not needed for self recognition for self realization but the attention reports to it it's okay if i can see my attention going like if there is a thought attention can go in that direction well uh, yeah the sequence we can deliberate but doesn't matter really so another way of uh, phrasing this exercise would be to say what is apparent or known to us without needing attention mm. 
the emptiness of our own being. The non-perceivable nature of ourselves, the Nirguna Brahman. Is it possible that you could be discovering the wrong Nirguna Brahman? Asking all of you, because all of you may, the mind will put it out to you saying, but how can you say this is it? How can you really say this is it? It is not possible, possible to discover two different things without qualities. Difference comes from qualitative difference. Either the color has to be different, it has to be different, or the size has to be different. Some difference comes from a quality. But the quality less cannot be discovered in two different ways. So confirm again that what you're finding about yourself is not a perception. It's beyond perception. Yes. So that which is beyond perception cannot be found in two different ways. Mm. True. <laughs> in, in the sense that you could not do this wrong. No. It's, not, it's not possible. Do you see that you were looking for something which is beyond all perception, which is the witnessing, which is unchanging, all of that. And you found that which is beyond perception. But hey, you have to confirm whether that is the right one, because there could be two different ones which are beyond perception. It is just not possible. And, and the reason I wanted to do this exercise is because the spiritual seeker is elaborated here. And oh, oh, so there there is. So the, the spiritual seeker in this being is elaborated. And when you sit and observe, it comes and tries to grasp something and yes, yes, take ownership. Yes, um, yes. but don't uh, even grasp this for the moment. Just grasp what I'm saying. That is, you know, yeah. Yeah. otherwise what will happen is it will be making comments about itself. I keep talking about the thief dressed up as the policeman pretending to catch the thief. What has been shared in satsang is more than enough. You don't have to build on it. You don't have to do a constructive exercise of any sort. Otherwise, what will happen soon is that the unperceivable reality which you're being pointed to is forgotten. And because the mind loves to hang on to, ah, this is what happens, you know, this is what the seeker does. This is, uh -huh. yeah. you have to yeah. switch out from that into back into belief. You see, the seeker's belief about the seeker itself, which is just like the dog chasing his tail, so it doesn't help. Don't add an inch to what you're discovering through what is being pointed to you. I your grace, Father. Now, what do you have to do? Just nothing. <laughs> it's, it's independent of that, isn't it? What is being pointed to is so far removed from the, from the realm of doing and not doing, from the, from the delusions of doership, that it has nothing to do with anything. Hmm. But because the habit seems to be to do, to want to know all of these things, then, then just remain open and empty till even that becomes just a statement, just a set of words.
when you are non resistive non resistive the truth of who you are is apparent to you already as you open open can sound like such a simple word open yes yes that's the first step in spirituality we have to learn acceptance you see it can sound like that but once you try it you notice that self recognition is fully apparent and the taste of this world is fully vibrant there's nothing missing just being open and empty my uh, kids arrived in the area to mm-hmm. test my emptiness <laughs> don't know that don't know anything at all <laughs> yes of course i know that your humor is very good and uh, i enjoy it always but what can happen is that i'm just ensuring that you're not taking this stuff seriously for yourself although i know you're joking about it i want to make sure that this is why i exposed it i didn't i i said it because i don't want to take it seriously i just want to stay yeah. where i am <laughs> remember uh, only just now you seen for yourself that which is beyond all perceptions and all perceptions includes all perceptions there is no category of per- perceptions which this does not include mm. you have seen yourself beyond all perceptions every perception so in reality there is no level or meaning to some perception more than other perception you see but you cannot do this pretending to be a body mind only from open and empty thank you thank you okay before we go to the next question i just want to take a sort of quick poll and uh, really check so when we said when you open an empty when you are relaxed that which is beyond perceptions is apparent to you how many feel a bit confused about that or and sure about that stays your physical hand body hand so parent okay i see one hand i see okay let me go to peter first then and then chanda after that <laughs> namaste father namaste um when i follow the the pointings just like you did with madalena when 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 the question is um is is there only perceptions or is there something else and it's very clear to me it's very clear that um there's something which is not perceivable which just observes all those perceptions yes either thoughts or be there just things on the outside it's it's very clear and it's also very clear that i'm that but on the other side um when i just don't follow the pointing when i just relax into beingness i could as as well say well i'm all of this um there is um and it's it's okay. like a, a little paradox where the mind likes to jump on you know um yes. following the pointings it's so clear and when i just when i when, when there's just beingness and no thoughts and and i also i could just could say well that's all me that's yes that's, yeah yes 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 okay so let's let's look at this so when you are just open and empty and you notice that there is something which is beyond perception we calling it something actually we are pointing to the non thingness of it yes and we are noticing that it is there so this now is it separate from that which is perceivable
or is perceivable just a thought experiment, a mental category that we provisionally create for us to follow this pointing in some way. It's it's a little bit like a provisional creation. That's exactly just to to make the pointings clear, to make exactly. the pointer clear. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But what exactly? Perfect. So, in what we notice now, in that which is beyond perception, is that in opposition in any way? Is there any tension between that and that which is perceivable? Is there any dividing line, separation, any of that? No. No. And. Is the notion of separation, oneness, duality, any of this even valid now? No, no, not at all. Exactly. exactly. No. Okay. Now, now let's do the second thing you're saying that when you're you apparently are going to bring your attention to your beingness and allow it to rest there. So let's do that. Let's do that. Bring your attention to the sense of being. In whatever way you can. And from there now, answer the same question. Is it just perceptions or is there something beyond perceptions even now? I was about to say there's just percept perceptions. <laughs> but um... okay. It's okay. So allow your attention to be in beingness. Allow the sense of beingness to just percolate everything, to, for it to just percolate everything in time and space. The entire universe is made up of this beingness. There's, there's a sense of this beingness. Yes, so the sense of this beingness. That which is aware of even this sense yes. is that perceived now? No, this is not perceived, but it's there. Exactly. exactly. It's always there. Yeah. That is that is what naturally happens when we are open and empty. You see, the beingness is fully apparent. And yet that which is beyond before I am is also fully apparent. And everything in the play of beingness, you see, lights up with the light of attention. And because our attention is not distracted with our thought activity, with our mental activity so much, even the vibrancy of the world seems to go up. You see, but that is the last thing we should be concerned about, not the first. <laughs> yes. So now let's do another experiment. All of us, I hope you are following along. As you're open and empty, try to make this beingness not apparent to you. It gets even more apparent. It's more apparent. Try to make that which is beyond perception not apparent. Like even the subtlest perception, which I say it's on the cusp of perception and non-perception, the primordial vibration of being itself, you see? So that which is aware of even this, try to make that not apparent to you, just as you're open and empty. It's like it's getting reinforced, like it's getting, it's, it's, yeah, it's not just like when you say, Try not to be, then it's it's apparent. Uh, it's so much apparent. And when you say try not to be aware of even being, then it's even more aware. I'm even more aware of it. Yes. Now this is the problem that consciousness has. You see? The truth is too apparent. So when it created the Leela, <laughs> when it created this play of Maya. I'm just talking nonsense, okay? This is just a fairy tale. Don't take it too seriously. Mm -hmm. So when it created this Leela, this Maya, it was just like, I'm untouched by this. Even if I've given myself a body through which I get a centrality of visual perspective, 
You see, it seems like I hear through this, even, even after that, I'm untouched by this. How is this going to be? How is this game going to be any fun? You see? So then consciousness decided that we need a na- narrator. And we needed to have a powerful narrative. But then, even with the narrator and the narrative, it's like, you are this body, you are this body, you were born, you are going to die, you need a partner, you need money, you need something, you need all of that, nothing. See? And consciousness is like, this game is just no fun because nothing. It is saying all of that. All this world seems to be moving according to all of this play of Maya, but still nothing. You see? You see? So then consciousness said, okay, I am going to give it, give myself the power to identify, the power to believe, you see, this narrator. You see? Just like uh, uh, a child uh, reading a fairy tale, pretending that it is part of the story. I'm going to give myself that power because, hey, I'm God, I can do anything. So, so it gave itself the power and said, okay, now, now I am the body. I can buy into that. Yeah, I am the body. See? See? And I, I need something. See, because this body is so small, I need to make myself bigger. So I need to... Um, get a relationship which I can call mine and then I'll be complete. You see, so all this then with the power of the narrative and the power to believe that narrative and the play of this uh, uh, perception, then it can seem like a viable game uh, uh, to play. But without all of this happening, (laughs) this Leela, this Maya is powerless. Yes. So, now what is happening is that uh, consciousness said, but what if <laughs> you see, using this power of belief, then I actually forget forever who I am. You see, because I've given myself, I'm God, I can give myself the power to identify as a body mind, as whatever I want. You see, but then if I give myself this power, then what would happen if I just then just use that power and I forgot? You see? I say, okay, now to ensure that I don't forget because this game is fine, but my magnificence is much more than what is possible to play in this game. So I don't want to live like this forever. So we'll make sure that I'll make sure that in the design of the game, there will be a point where there's a tiredness to this game. There's a tiredness about this game. And that tiredness we call suffering. The quest to find something bigger, the quest to find, discover ourselves as something beyond this body-mind, will be the product of this suffering. And then I will also give myself that natural intelligence, which is here, the power to remind me that I am not this. I am not this. And that that intelligence, we will call that intuition. And the the way to come out of the delusion of being separate, of being a body-mind, is to access this true intelligence, which is pointing us back to the truth of who we, who we are. And this is what we call going from the head to the heart. So that's the game that is being played in satsang, in the world. And satsang is the part where we are sort of playing the game of learning how to go from head to heart. The most, the, the most astonishing, uh, maybe astonishing is not the right word, is that even this, this word, um, even this body is just uh, dissolving into kind of uh, different visual and some, some perceptions. That's, that's <laughs> this word, um, well, astonishing is maybe not right, but it's, in beingness, this, this sometimes comes to me. Wow! Even, even this is just—it's only some perceptions, and I'm not this, 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 this construct, this instrument. This is so.
In fact, effortlessly, all this insight is becoming apparent for you. And there comes a point where it will seem like too much hard work to try and play as if you are the body. Imagine having to go back to that mental oppression and mental slavery. Saying, but this is what you need to have. You cannot be happy unless you got this. You know, this kind of stuff. You don't want to go back into that kind of way of existence. I often go back. It's okay. <laughs> Just like in the movie, it'd be no fun if it just ended prematurely. Sometimes it's a little bit of back and forth, friction, and you see all that is required. So it keeps us, keeps consciousness riveted to this play, <laughs> even the end game of the play. There's another hand, I feel like it is. Chanda, do you want to come up, my dear? Chanda? <laughs> Master Father. Master. Just so in the open empty father, just one observation was a it feels effortful to go to the head. Yeah. And the second was there was one thought that did rise that open empty as one is experiencing open empty but is it a feeling okay so we'll look at this so uh, open empty is just a non resistive non state but we call it a state for the moment you see are you still here i don't see you i'm here father could you see me second yes yeah, so just non-resistive. Let everything come and go. Let everything come and go. All thoughts can come and go. All words can come and go. All perceptions can come and go. See, everything is allowed to come and nothing is allowed to stay, which is this natural movement anyway. So we are not grasping at anything. We are not understanding anything. Just come and go. Yes? Yes. Now, is, are there only perceptions here? And I use the word here loosely, obviously. It simply is. It's okay. Simply. Are there only perceptions perceived? Is there, is there something beyond perceptions? And don't answer from any peer pressure. Just honest conversation between friends. Are there only perceptions as you are as you are completely open and empty? You notice that there is something that is not a perception. There is more. There is a wholeness, a yes. fullness. Yes, but because it is beyond perception, it's very difficult to determine. Whether it is this way or that way, because it is empty of quality. No? So effortlessness, rather. It's a whole effortlessness. Yes, yes. And what can you say about it? Can you say that it is aware? Yes. Yes. Can you spot any distance between it and No. So these perceptions may go away, may come and go, you see. But but you notice that this is un, unmovable because it has no quality that can move. No, it has. It just is. It just is. Isn't it? So this is the unperceivable reality of what you are. It is beyond all definitions. You cannot make a true construct about it. You, at best, we can just point to it in these ways. 
You see, the second thing I want to ask you then is that is this now when you open an MT, is this an opposition to experiencing the world? What is your experience of the world now? How many? I'm just using a word. Yes, yes, exactly. exactly. Would you say that the perception of the world has dimmed or, or has it not dimmed? Same, same, same. same. So you, will, you will notice actually um, that uh, it may seem to become more vibrant. It may seem like you're looking at the world for the first time. Because you will notice that your attention is not getting dissipated between the head and the actual just perceiving the world. You see, but we don't have to rush into any of that. As you lose interest in the mind, because we've done this experiment often, isn't it? We've said, try to look at this hand and, and pay attention to a thought clearly. Try to do both clearly at the same time. Can you do it? No. Not possible. It becomes, the hand becomes blurry or the thought becomes blurry. So, in the human condition, at least in my case, I can't really say for everyone, but it, before I met Guruji, it was like I had not seen the world. You see, because I was living mostly in the head. Maybe as a child, I saw the world. So, this is the beauty of self recognition. This is the beauty of the unknown. This is the beauty of open and empty. That not only does that reality which is the purest light beyond all perception become apparent to you but but also the light of your being the light of your consciousness which gives light to everything in this universe fully it is not as if the light of the being little bit goes there little bit goes there little bit goes there you see it is not quantifiable in that way you see and that is why i say don't like dissipate your light notice your light fully and everything that you perceive contains the full light of consciousness already in that perception. So the beauty of this open and empty is that self-recognition, that which is beyond all perceptions is apparent. But to, to meet God, for God to meet itself in all perceptions is also apparent. And therefore, my imploration to all of you is that desire now after this, desire only if you can digest what you already have. After this, what else can you want? In, in the tiniest light, you're, you may have just woken up. There may be just a small, small opening in the curtain through which a little bit of light is coming into your room. But even in perceiving that, you're meeting yourself as God. It's so beautiful. Thank you, God. Nothing else is coming up. Very good. Oh, my love. When we believe our thoughts, when we believe that they are speaking the truth about us, we believe in the existence of a me, of a separate person. So recently I've been using the word me sang. <laughs> when we believe our thoughts, when we believe in the existence of a separate me, then I've been calling that me sang. To be in satsang is the opposite of me sang. How to be in satsang? 
it doesn't you don't have to be in this room you don't have to be in this zoom you see just when you're not in me some <laughs> there is that thing you know not buying into the notion of me even such thing that what such thing is for let's go to satyam thank you peter thank you हेलो अनंता जी नो माय डियर हेलो नमस्ते फादर कैन यू हियर मी यस यस आई कैन हियर वेल देयर इज अ देयर इज अ देयर इज अ इंट्यूटिव सेंस ऑफ व्हाट यू आर सेइंग दैट दिस इज द अन द अनपरसीवेबल uh yeah. you can't this is here it, what is is done perceivable and there's a sense uh, uh, of that it's somewhere located it it's the mind is saying there's a location in the yeah whatever you know, however you want to uh, uh my 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 biggest concern right now is though there's an intuitive sense it's always uh, like after these insights which happen then there is such a big storm of the mind which comes yeah. and in my and in my case i don't know if consciousness is playing this way <laughs> it's the it's the heart uh, when these symptoms happen yes and i slip into this panic is it only my internet connection or is it frozen for everyone frozen hmm. is back hey, you can you hear me i can hear you now yeah i feel like we got the gist of uh, what you were saying i promise you i promise you that if you remain in this open and empty in this non perceivable recognition of the self is it is not possible that these things will have much power over you for much longer it is yeah. not possible that you are having a pristine insight into the nature of your reality and the narrative still continues to have its power over you and yeah you uh, bring you to such levels of belief that you get into panic and all of those things in the body things will continue to happen as 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 they must in all bodies but uh, but uh, you will find it very difficult to come into any such sort of mental psychological states yeah yeah because it's so and and it's only later that i see that oh i have a little problem saying that i slip into it something slips into that something gives into that but what i am stays as as is this intuitive stays but something gives in and it's only later but in the moment when it's happening something gives in and 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 uh, the whole narrative is reimposed through the through the through the through the uh through the uh, sensations in, in in the body it seems to be um it's not that the narrative is imposed um uh, through the body but the narrative uses the sensations as evidence to prove its validity yes the narrative yes the narrative yes it uses the it uses the sensation to reimpose its its yeah. value yes, yes 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 so is it possible to 
stay in this intuitive when this happens this is my uh, this is my yes yes not only is it possible it will become more and more natural it will become more and more effortless although initially it may seem like um, a choice which you're making to not go to the head to stay in the heart you see initially it may seem like a choice but you will notice that through grace it is happening like bhagwan said very clearly that as long as it feels like a choice make the choice but ultimately you will see that all of it was also grace i really because i know you know deep in my heart that master's grace is so i really need your help here to overcome this because it's blessings whatever you want to call it because it takes a lot of my attention and energy since after this has happened it's become a like it's living this narrative is living its own reality you know with it's really you know it has its life of its own and i see that now that wow this has become it's, it's like its own it's a creature which is living you know the more you think about that the more you need to neutralize it easy so, sorry sorry anantha i missed the last words what do you more think right? that the more you give that some shape the more you have to neutralize it the more you have to uh, uh, deconstruct it the more you have to inquire into its reality yeah so my blessing to you is that just naturally effortlessly may you be open and empty most of the time and as is natural for your life to play out may all these things become lighter and lighter like a feather may they become easy yeah thank thank you so much again and again <laughs> all my love okay let's go to aniko <clears throat> there's some question in chat as well thank you ananta ji uh, can you hear me yes yes, yes. thank you um so uh, when you were talking with madalina and uh, uh so uh, this effortless place is uh, very apparent uh, the beingness uh, is like uh, all the perception but uh, when you when when you ask uh, is it uh, what is behind the perception is it uh, apparent and then uh, this effort is coming back to find uh, what is behind the perception okay and like this let's is not do, it let's do it together so just relax first relax like we were saying last time <laughs> fully relax nothing has to be done about anything at all just relax just like that now tell me are there only perceptions effortless are there only perceptions or is there something other than perception i know what i should say but uh yeah I, whatever, I cannot... whatever seems true right now just say that is fine yeah there is perception and i don't know what is behind uh, i don't know what is behind it there is only perception no you are saying your report is there is only perception yes and if i was to insert another pointer there and say so that which is aware of the, that there is only perception is also perceived i cannot i can i cannot find who what is what is the one who is aware about the perception yes and there could be somebody because you are confirming it is only perception so that which is aware that it is only perception in what way is that one perceived 
or make it simpler that which is aware of perception how is that perceived are you aware of these perceptions or no this me this me bird of me is very confused <laughs> this is the problem of the spiritual the pro, the question is simpler this is the question is simpler just with the innocence of a child yeah. who is aware of these perceptions who is aware of the perception of hearing this voice i i am aware of yeah. you are so this i that is aware is, how is that perceived in no way Is it? Then how do you know you are aware? Because it is obvious. Exactly. This obviousness is self knowledge. But This? when you when you say just stay there, where? So I don't. I I mean. Yes, it is obvious that I am aware, but okay. so wherever, <laughs> whatever makes it obvious to you, stay there. If it's obvious all of the time, then stay anywhere. If it's only obvious some of the time, then stay that way. Stay however you are when it is apparent to you who you are. uh maybe maybe the word that apparent because maybe my mind is translated then i have to know what does it means to be apparent and yes 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 many have struggled with this apparent thing so obvious is fine in the way yeah. that it is obvious obvious is fine stay yeah. how it is obvious to you who you are Anantaji and something else I would like to ask. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they took something from my uh, skin, and then they sent it for a examination for investigate. Is it a nice one or a not a nice one? And this result, I didn't get it yet. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, as as the constructed body mind, <laughs> I am really uh, afraid uh, for this. so every day i just waiting for oh my god maybe is coming now and my you know my death statement or something like this and i just would like to ask if you could bless about this or pray for full blessings full love thank you so much anandaji yeah, okay um before we go to atma jyoti and shikant let me see if i can look at some of these questions dear father the perception of loving sentiments caring friendliness sweet emotion towards others are all false are all false question mark um, your confirmation will help as there is a lot of baggage an attachment that comes with these pleasant perceptions and they are more di- difficult to discard as unreal now if you did not have these mental categories that this is loving sentiment this is friendliness this is caring so does this all go away even an infant who doesn't know any of these words loves the mother is it is the mother did not go to any school and had no language grew up in a tribe of lions or something see she would still love the child <laughs> so it is independent of all these constructs you see in fact without boxing it without labeling it you may allow it to unfold in a much more natural way without the i should be like this this one should be like this towards me you see 
so are labeling things as loving sentiment or this is caringness friendliness sweet emotion when i say discard i'm not saying discard this aspect of the human play human existence you see i'm saying discard the categories from your head and discard definitely the shoulds and should not saying i should be like this and i should not be like this and see what unfolds naturally Yes, Sumit uh, has helped me with this. He says perceptions is through the senses and the mind, and when I say apparent, it is through intuition. One says, "My dear father, how are you? I have been in Australia and I'm good. Miss you lots. Okay, same same, my dear. Can you please talk about how it feels from the perspective of the of the enlightened being?" after leaving the body the whole benefit to enlightenment is that there are no perspectives left this <laughs> is the fifth in fact this is the very question uh, that the buddha said the fifth for you know this so i'm not really explaining it uh, Let's go to Atma Jyoti. <clears throat> oh dear. Hello. Ah. <clears throat> I I just really wanted to. I don't know. Just maybe check in, or yes. I just raise my hand and. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I, <clears throat> I could um share some self assessments or I don't know but like they are so fleeting that yeah like I don't know if I should even bother with that give me a gist give me a gist of self assessment okay <laughs> um I don't know. I feel like I don't know. Like um, I don't think anything. Like thoughts are there. Like some, some like um, psychological, some like personal, some like about uh, things I need to do or you know to organize. And but they're just like so. It's not that far away, but it's just like they there, not there. Doesn't matter. Uh, feeling and uh, some feelings let's say very personal arise and it's just like okay is experience but is not made like a big deal out of it somehow and just like yeah i feel like i can say that i think but i don't think like that and um i don't know and i somehow i don't i don't think about satsang about god like i don't know what like just um, <clears throat> self assessments like oh this is my life you know i love that one <laughs> that one so, you love no you know for years you heard it all <laughs> yeah, so you say you're saying that although all thoughts seem so so unrelatable in some sense but when they come with some specific thoughts you still uh, buy into is that what you're reporting or even that is no. Mm, even that is kind of like, oh, I can't be bothered with that. Like almost like an in, in, okay. inner laziness to even look at that. Like it comes, blah blah blah. And just oh, it's not even that. Oh, even not this. It's just like yeah. Yeah. it's so <laughs> neutral. It's so neutral. And no thoughts that it's neutral. Exactly. exactly. No thoughts that it's like open and empty. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Only because I'm speaking to you because I can't. I can't but like. So good. So yeah, like that. 
but I'm not sure if it's true. <laughs> like yes, that's the best. <laughs> like I'm saying this, but I don't know. I don't know if I am, if I'm not. It's just like like this kind of feel like if it's true, if if it's not, it's real, not real. God, not God. Like I don't know. Somehow it's like wiped out, not wiped out. You know, like just like. That's good, not good, not sure. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Okay, it's nice to hear that it's good, but <laughs> maybe. <Yeah>. Don't know. <laughs> kind of like that. So yeah, but still, there is like a feeling maybe that I I need to check in. Like I don't know. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Just. It's very good. You lose. Track and you lose the need to track the state of human existence, the state of what is happening. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it? Sometimes, of course, uh, even in this case here, the state for years is that uh, the approval of Guruji and his saying, you know, that reassuring was uh, still seemed to have some um, potency and power here. And then even today, actually, if you can say, hey. I heard your satsang, and you know I wasn't so happy. And mm-hmm. still have something. I still have the thing. So some, of course, it's natural to have some of that. So. Yes. And, yeah, I have to confess. Like um, some time ago, like a few weeks ago, I had like a for like a day or two, like such a spiritual um, arrogance in me. I was so proud, so proud. Like I was, I was like. I was just like, what is this? Like, I, I couldn't even believe where is it even coming from? Like, it came as such a surprise. And it was like, it wasn't a nice pill to swallow. I even couldn't sleep at night because I was like, oh, such a big, you know. Okay. Jesus. I'm so enlightened. I'm not getting sleep. No. They say, oh, we no. don't sleep at night. Yes. That's also happening. <laughs> Not like that, but just like some things maybe happened, but like yeah, and it was like it was like get a grip, you know, <laughs> like what is this? But just like I allowed it to pass, you know, and and it just I don't know vanished for now, maybe I don't know. Hopefully, so with that I'm leaving at your feet. <clears throat> sure. Yeah, even to say that is not like so nice. Like, uh, maybe I should I have said. <laughs> good. Yeah. It sounds very good to me. Very beautiful. I'm very happy. Very happy. Very nice. Full, full love, full blessings. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. All my love. Let's go to Srikant. Namaste, Father. Namaste, my dear. Okay. Oh, one second. Yeah. I don't know what should I speak of. Yeah. Um, Father, as I raise my hand, uh, 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 like my heartbeat increases every time. I don't know why. Good, no? <laughs> Is it to me? I raise my hand and I come on the hot seat and nothing happens. <laughs> that may not necessarily be better. So this is also fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There are these two things uh, that oh, one thing is I am not uh, seriously looking for a job, huh. and then and and then there is also this counter thought that you are not even you know serious in your uh, spiritual. Yeah, yeah. Serious <coughs> is good. How do we know serious is good? And maybe this thought that I am. <coughs> Is this a condition and, that uh, has come from parents and society? Ah, uh, could be further that. <laughs> also, I have told my kids also often, so I'm not much to be. Honest, but, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> you see, it's a parent job to give their children conditioning, and it's a guru's job to take it away. 
Why do you have to be serious? I mean, it's, it's all like uh, staying at home and then depending on my brothers, <clears throat> not not earning my uh, livelihood and all. Then one thing starts attached to another and. But you're open. You're not serious, but you're open. Are you uh, serious and closed? There, there is also this concern that I am not serious about being serious. I don't know if I am putting it in the right way. <laughs> you don't have to be serious about being serious, but you can't be not serious and closed. I don't know what means by closed. Closed means that. Uh, you are allowing life to unfold in its own way not that you okay we can do anything else but you can have mental constructs about how it should be i am in spirituality so then i don't want to have a job any of that stuff is happening uh, there, there is this uh, uh, always uh, this thing that the mind cannot predict the life yeah yeah whatever it is coming it's, it's coming from my mind and it's it's not true Yeah. So leave this also. Leave the mind prediction, of course, and leave that it cannot also like fully empty. Don't hold on to the tiniest notion. Don't hold on to any idea. Can the mind predict? I don't know. Can it not predict? I don't know. Just open. don't fear fear and don't try to dissolve fear with the antidotes of spiritual concepts if fear comes fear comes i am just so non serious about life i don't know what's going to happen be open it's okay then and then there is also this thing father that <clears throat> suddenly something great is realizes that the mind is rushing and then uh, this spiritual concept comes that who am i or am i aware this thing before that thing comes up something has already noticed that you no know, this is happening yeah. and then is it also uh, the will of this cosmos or god's will or, <laughs> or is there something that oh, i can do the mind where i have to tell you that you must just relax let go of all your spiritual concepts through the spiritual encyclopedia don't understand anything through a spiritual lens or through a worldly lens you can throw both those lenses away now nothing is anything don't put anything into any categories of conceptual understanding don't determine whether it is the will of god or not the will of god nothing i always just think that my mind is too noisy or too busy is always there with me and then uh, one day i was watching this video of muji baba where baba says that <clears throat> there is this deep conditioning in us that mind needs to be calm for spiritual progress to happen or to see what you are so the, so listening to the mind about how the mind is is not going to make the mind calm mm. is it you cannot get to manonasa by following the mana try to destroy it makes it more strong any effort is using the wrong instrument what is apparent to you effortlessly the seeing and what are you the one that knows the seeing very good now 
in the report that you have had about yourself so far what does it have to do with that one which one so that one that you just recognize yourself to be it, it doesn't have any st- anything to do with anything <laughs> exactly so why am i telling you this so that you don't value all that stuff which belongs to the non existent one anyway okay so let me let me spell it out a little bit more only in the mind there are opposites and categories the mind way of living the world is to try and put everything into uh, the right category this is the good way to live this is the bad way to live this is what i should do this is what i should not do these are my children these are not my children this is my life this is not my life so all of life goes in this categorization when you come into spirituality it is not so that you can create a new box now which says okay this is category of spirituality you see if you are really listening in satsang then your seven chakras will open up you see and if you really see so you can take all this knowledge and put it in like spiritual categories if this was really happening to me then by now i'd be fully open and empty so then what happens is the mind itself creates a box that says come come i've got all the goodies for you you see and everything that you've learned in satsang are lying as concepts over there you see and you feel like they are goodies and they are actually candy and you're going to enjoy them but actually the mind will oppress you using them you see so all of satsang especially satsang like this what we call direct satsang is meant to have a deconstructive effect not a constructive effect if you're constructing a spirituality if you're constructing a methodology if you're constructing a way to live out of what i've said then that is not truly what i'm saying you see so open and empty is empty of everything including open and empty you see and it is not open and empty so that the life of shrikant who doesn't exist can become better or give or even to give clues in terms of how that life should go or not go because that is being done perfectly well by consciousness so the design of satsang is just consciousness playing as if it needs a reminder about who it is and that reminder shows up in this way there is nothing you need to hold on to mentally you don't have to work hard at it it's not a classroom there's no exam there's no final exam enlightenment exam nothing like that just relax so this has become like very important for me to say to everyone in satsang which is first you relax so in that spiritually wound up state you know, everything that i'm saying is going into some other compartment of spirituality get it get it please understand this is your chance get you know, like that See? so that's why i want to first tell you just first relax there's <laughs> nothing nothing will go to your heart you see the mind will try to deflect everything make obstacles with everything it will play that you heard me talking about the whack a mole whatever i say it will say yeah i can do it will be the mind receiving all of this so first just nothing is wrong there is no trouble anywhere everything is fine you see, don't worry. just relax <laughs> you see? this is open and empty as you are open and empty now tell me is what you are not apparent to you that which is beyond all perception there is this i don't know what we call like an like an energy or yeah like an emptiness filled with something and then there is like a <clears throat> like a like a wall on which all this is happening and that is being seen and if i was to ask you all of this who is aware of the energy the field of consciousness the screen of consciousness the images all of this that which is aware is that can we even call that an energy is it does it have any energetic uh, no. Uh, no quality no no just wanted to clarify that because many times we may feel like 
awareness is a form of energy or something. So just final tip I have for you is just keep your spiritual mind also aside. Your spiritual mind is not your heart, it's not your intuition. It is the one posing as if it is your intuition. How to know if you are truly with your intuition? If who you are is what is apparent to you, then you can follow that intuition. And Father, what is this vibration or sound within me? It's, it's always like if there is, let's say there is a power cut all of a sudden and it, it fills the whole space like, like a strong vibration. It's Yeah. What is anything? In which box can I put my explanation of what this is? It must be surrounded by categories of what something else is, what that is, what that is. Do we know what anything is? So what am I saying? I'm pointing you to the human condition which can ask these questions from the mind, but the mind does not have the capacity to receive the answer. You see, The mind is just a bundle of thought. So what you can receive in the mind is just a concept, but concepts are what I'm taking away from you. So why would I want to give you a new concept? And then maybe also this, uh, this unknowing desire that how can I use this? Anything conceptual will only trouble you eventually. So I'm not going to indulge in that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me something that your heart doesn't know already. Rest in your intuition enough to first audit that. And then say, okay, this I don't know really. Can you tell me? Remember that anything true, where you don't know, you can never know. <coughs> and where it is known, it is never unknown. It's only a question of the right instrument. This will take the journey out of the spiritual search. Okay. If you claim that I don't know, see, what is my truth, what is this, what is love, what is God, what is Guru, what is anything valuable. Okay. There where you don't know, don't expect to find out. You can never know over there. There must be another aspect of your being where this is already a path. The sun is just moving away from that false knowledge, that false container of concepts which we think is knowledge into true knowledge which we call intuition or intuitive insight. So you noticed where you didn't know? Do you notice? Sorry, I didn't. Did you notice where you didn't know the answer to the question you asked? I mean, <clears throat> my mind wants. Yes, we don't know in the mind. Mm -hmm. So use that as a clue to, to understand that it can never know the answer to this. Not to try and feed it the answer. It has no mouth to receive the answer. It is just a bucket of concepts. No true insight can ever come in your mind. Only in your heart. So when your mind complains, saying, I don't know this. If I knew this, I'd be free. 
Say good, you don't notice. You can never know. But also, I, uh, I ask for your blessings. Full, full blessings. Okay, let's go to Amrita Anuj. Namaste. Oh, not very audible like always. Yes, recovering from COVID, Father, again. <laughs> ah, achha. this is what? Are you setting a world record for it? Yeah. <laughs> what, third time? Or fourth? No, fourth time. Fourth, oh. I guess. So, so we consider when happening with Marishna, we uh -huh. make yeah. Third time. <laughs> How you're doing all right? All good? Yeah, yeah I'm uh, much, much better. Just very tired, physically yeah. very exhausted. This, thing. this is the thing. The fatigue is the... More than that, father, the mind. <laughs> um, it's like so. Uh, you were here in the last session. You kept on cancelling something. Huh? There's no broadcast. Last Friday there was. Uh, but last Friday I was very sick. Very sick, actually. So. Um, so I was going to ask you the question I asked everyone in the last satsang, which is, how do you know? How do I know what? So uh, you're going to tell me what your mind has been saying and troubling you with. So how do you so know? The more, uh, how do I know? Because I'm seeing it. Huh? Huh? I'm seeing it. Tell me something you're seeing. The story which the mind is narrating. <laughs> Okay, what is it? What is it narrating? So you know what is happening through you, what the mind is doing to you through the story that the mind is telling you. Yes. How can that be the solution to anything? Yeah, so my question was <laughs> mind narrating the story is uh, it happens sometimes I believe in that and sometimes I don't. How do you know? Tension, that tension which goes there. Uh, How do you know this is what happens to you? I'm conscious about it. Uh, like, huh? I'm aware about it. You're just like, your awareness is holding on to the memory of what happens to you. I'm just aware that this is happening. Achha. I'm believing in it too, in the thought, whatever is coming. Something is believed in that thought very strongly. Something is believed yeah. in it. And so, it so, is, I have a lot so, of meaning for that. And then. So, is your intuition telling you that this is what's been happening with you, or is your mind telling you? It's, it's no, no, it's completely mine. So, if you can find the mind's idea that this is my problem. And has your problem changed since uh, like the seven years we've known each other? <laughs> problem is always the same. You see? So if we keep buying the mind's interpretation of, of what the problem is, then do you feel like the mind is our friend that much that it will tell us this is what happens with you? Okay. So the thing is like, I know, I mean, something knows here that this is not true. Okay, what is that something? There's a, there's just a scene here or feel here that's not true. It's not, it is happening, but it is not true. There's something, some, something wants or some, some desire to happen that way. Takes it a little far. I want this to happen this way. But then there's another sense to it that 
this might what i want might be a disaster like what i'm wanting could be also a disaster but then there's something which is very compelling at times or very sticky at times or like i mean from past two weeks uh, i'm been uh, very down like physically been covid usse pehle thoda my bp was low and very uh, the immunity had gone down and in this the whole process some now i don't feel like even working the challenge is that there's no pull or there's no uh, thing to work uh, and then to that the lot of stories are built in the mind it's not yes my child i want to tell you very very uh, it may sound a bit hard but this report is also mind isn't it yes so yes. then you cannot cure the poison by inhaling more poison you see if the poison comes in the shape of i am going to help you get rid of the mind but it's still poison are you going to digest that are you going to ingest that see? so till you don't stop relying on the mind reports about what your problem is till then you cannot be rid of the mind because you're giving it the the uh, the truth value saying that what you determine to me my problem is my actual problem now who are you in all of this story you are the body mind you see so so if you want to fix life from having that lens on that i am going to take the mind's perspective on first that i am this body mind this there's a time is real i had this past i am going to have this future if you put all that first as a precondition then say okay now how can i solve it from within that it's like first putting on the kaleidoscope and then saying show me god within the kaleidoscope <laughs> to see god you have to first get rid of the kaleidoscope what can you truly say from your heart about your reality perfect look at that <laughs> don't go to the head go to the head who can we go to where can we go to determine our actual reality because that's what we want to presume we don't want to spend the rest of our life solving problems of the non existent one Okay. so we I'm must tie up of that now like exhausted of that yeah. so what is that source of knowledge which can even tell us what is the true question that i have it cannot be the mind itself i mean then there is no true question from the mind it cannot be because the voice of the falls will never be on your on the side of the truth saying ask this ask this and you will become free and how many times have you played that game where where you take the mind's notion to be true about your life and you define yourself as if you are a body and then uh, how does it work out it only that notion has to be removed isn't it that's always been the only solution it is not from within that construct that we can ever find a solution but the mind of course will tell you what then what am i supposed to do now ji but he'll keep proposing the false one as if it is true as if it is your reality don't buy into that proposal you're good at this no when you get offers from outside i know you get a lot of business offers people want to buy factory they want to buy land you get all these offers isn't it so you evaluate them no as if they are true or not So do the same thing with your head. <laughs> If you keep buying into the head's notion that this world happens to you, I keep getting stuck in this, and this is what happens, and I don't want to work, 
then, then this, all of that, you see, it's just the head's idea of the functioning of the body, which has nothing to do with your reality. So empty of your head, become headless and speak from your heart. Like you did in that one moment where you realized everything is fine, it's perfect. <laughs> You can live like this. You can live like this. You don't have to just use the, the physical environment of satsang to bring ourselves in that openness, in that emptiness. And then when satsang is over, get back into the mind to deal with life. You can deal with the entirety of life from the same space. So, what is happening? So, I've been teasing them, and that's why I was asking. <laughs> I've been teasing everyone, at least those who are living in Bangalore. So, I've been saying, So, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? From where can we get an answer? So if I say, How are you? Where do you have the answer? Where can we go for the answer? If you keep going to the head, you know, this is what happened and this is my life is like this and da, 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 same, same stuff. Lifetime will go like this. No? There's no time for this anymore. So, none of that business. <laughs> none of that business. Just empty. And it's not a mask that we put on. It is emptying yourself of all the masks and you can live like that. Why I'm reinforcing is that maybe there's an idea that uh, when I'm working, when I'm dealing with other personal things, then I have to work from the mind or something like that. It's not true. Yeah, that I've realized in past. That is, uh, and in fact, it doesn't happen. Like, uh, that so much of calculation doesn't happen. It has somewhere, it has to just happen naturally something just feels right or sometimes just doesn't just I don't know really, there's a lot of uh, shift I feel at times when it is head it's too much uh, how, how will you know when something is mental or it is intuitive no when it is from head it's so much of rush it's so much of calculation and uh, there's so much of me that sense that what is there in only for me yeah. I mean it just gets too heavy yeah. to even yeah. Get. yeah and when you are intuitive what you are truly is apparent to you and yet life can unfold from there so. yeah, it becomes more effortless but very organic So now, intuitively, what is the report? I just believe in what the mind says and then the circle starts. <laughs> um. So till we speak next time, you're going to not do this. Not that it's a sin or something. Not that if you do this once, then I'll get angry or something. I'm just saying that just hold it in your heart. Just yeah. talk, it, talk it. Like till we speak next, you will not listen to the mind. If you end up listening, then gently come back to the heart. It's not like an oppressive exercise or something. Something becomes quite, very quickly one with it at times. Like there is no. Who's saying? 
this is a report just with the deal just now we made the deal <laughs> not <laughs> all right all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hear your words from the heart when they're from the heart. Yes. Yes, Father. Thank you, Father. <laughs> very good. Very good. All my love. Full blessings to the body to heal from COVID and other things. Good love to everyone there. Anuj is good. Yes, Father. Yeah. I'm good and I want to be you know, there in front of the camera. Ah, yes, we were going to talk about this and then I didn't respond to the message. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So sorry about that. I wanted us to be there, Father. <laughs> <laughs> All my last one. Let's go to Claudia. Hello, Father. Namaste. Uh, namaste. Mm. Yeah. Yes, uh, heart beating. I have to expose uh, something to you. I'm postponing uh, from satsang to satsang. I, I clearly can observe that there is something apart in me um, wanting a personal outcome. Ah, yes, yes, yes. You can observe that there's an aspect of you which, which is proposing that it is pointless unless you get a personal benefit, yes? Yes, and it uh, relates, it came, it was triggered again after what Satyam said and Aniko, it's concerning health and the body. Yeah. And uh, now it's a little bit, uh, and I feel ashamed about that, now that I got the, some, my personal life, I got peace. My personal life is, uh, uh, I don't think about, uh, and it has to run like it runs. Yeah. There is this, uh, yes, this, this attachment too much to the body and an idea. Uh, <laughs> yes. And so if, if I may ask you, I know that all of you are tired of hearing this, but how do you know this is your problem? No, it's not my problem. <laughs> it's, I know that it's not a problem. Uh, it's, and uh, I experienced that God is running my body and all. I went through COVID completely alone. No friend, near friend, no neighbor was there. And uh, I surrendered. I had to surrender. Yeah. And uh, it worked out. Uh, yes. I'm fine, yeah. but uh, I like if there is it's a part of me wanting a guarantee. <laughs> yes. How do you know there's a part of you wanting a guarantee? Uh, yes, observing mind. It's mind <laughs> coming. It's, it's, it's observation. It's not observation, my dear. Just, just sorry, sorry if I'm harsh again. It's just your mind proposing that this is your problem. Yeah. You see? And it's, it's just like du in a duality. Yes. There is the... the thief pretending to be the policeman. Yes. In this case, pretending to be your friend, telling you now your only problem is this. Actually, you have no problem. Yeah. In your heart, what is the problem? No problem. As you open and empty, you see God's presence is here. In God's presence, how can there be a problem? No, no problem. Nothing is there. But when the mind says, it pretend, it puts on the spiritual mask and uses what yes. we learned spiritually and says, now you have too much personal attachment. You see? And when we take that to be true, 
then we be, we take ourselves to be what we take ourselves to be the spiritual seeker the body mind again isn't it so be very wary of uh, making any sort of uh, constructs about yourselves just examine how do i know this how do i know and if it is the same one that we are trying to be free from which is proposing the solutions then obviously that cannot be the solution so we may also say like um, i'm half joking saying we may say okay the mind is proposing i have this problem my real problem must be something else this cannot be it yeah. see and soon you learn out of all problems that you can place on to yourself so whatever we think we want we don't want actually Yes, and somehow I know I'm one with you. Uh, my mind wants you to solve my problem <laughs> and take, burn it. Just take it and burn it. Yes, but well, remember, I always say the way to suffer is to try and solve non-existent problems. Yeah. Independent of who should solve it, once we get into the belief system that there is this problem. You see, it is. But but how is the problem possible? Like, what is the problem? Problem would mean something contrary to the will of God, <coughs> contrary to the will of the shining light, which is our very presence. It cannot be contrary. Nothing can be contrary to that. and don't waste a moment trying to convince your mind about anything at all just let it be let it be where can we go to get a true report about ourselves so this takes out all this conditioning from the very root our conditions rely on our mental conclusions about the state of our existence this is what's happening with me this is my current thing but how do we know all my love all blessings the body is recovering well from this uh, thing now yes i recovered fatigue but i recovered well yes thank you let's go to janak uh, hello can can you hear me i can hear you my dear Uh, hi i haven't talked in a while and uh, yes. i would like to say thank you and i i have to i i think today is the day to to expose some some things uh-huh. because i think that even though my life is generally getting easier and in general i think there is some uh, like spirit from time to time i can sense some spiritual uh, st- stiffness or <laughs> like uh, I think it could be because of the knowledge again again the knowledge <laughs> the knowledge spiritual knowledge and uh, from this can come sometimes some different forms of 
expression. Ah, yes. Like uh, I was even had a very in a funny way. I went uh, once to the shop, and, <laughs> and two two ladies at the counter like laughed straight into my face, and I can I can sense why because I went there and I was like maybe some seriousness, tiny seriousness on the face. Like maybe I'm expecting something, some reaction from the people mm. for, for my enlightenment or something like yeah, this. Yes, 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 we recognize yes, yes, you yes. come. <laughs> and I guess I'm, I'm like, this is making me tired because there's so many beautiful like situation moments and I'm missing out on that because of these personas, spiritual personalities or some. And I would really... really love to ask you for your help to to make it as life goes on to expose it or somehow dissolve it I really... i'm happy that um, to see that um, there's a certain lightness lightness in your report there's a certain openness in the way you're expressing even about this so very nice uh, that will help you this lightness and openness will take away all of this I want to share a story. I was just telling them the other day also, if I can share. So there was a boy who used to come to satsang here a few years back. And um, and we went to Rishikesh um, during Guruji's satsang. In one of Guruji's satsang, this boy felt like he really got it. You know? Felt like I've got it, I'm enlightened. That's it. So he went outside um, the satsang hall. And uh, he was just standing outside the gates, you know, the satsang hall in Rishikesh. So outside the gates of that uh, satsang hall. And this lady, this Western lady, he was an Indian boy. And this Western lady just started coming towards him, you know, with great purpose. So he started thinking to himself, is it happening now? Can they recognize me now? Can they see that I'm free? You see? So, so what happened is that this lady got to him and she said, can you please tell me where the auto rickshaws are so I can go get the auto rickshaw? <laughs> so that brought the whole thing like that. <laughs> so don't you don't have to worry about these things. Life will make sure that uh, it takes care of any spiritual ego that is developing. As long as you you contain, if you have the same lightness and openness that you do now, I don't see any danger of uh, that ego becoming too strong. You see? So um, thank you. So I, I hope uh, I hope it will. And thank you for, for coming each Friday to, to be with us here. So, so, so welcome. So, so welcome. I will see how it goes. If, if, if there's anything else to expose, I, I don't know for the moment, but thank you. You're welcome. On my life. Okay, let's go to the next one. Ananda. Ananda Rose. I got the rose from Ananda Rose today. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, I can't see. That rose represents this head. <laughs> um, please excuse um, how I went to, because it's so early in the morning, fell asleep again, and woke up in a panic because I believe I'd lost the satsang. So, so you. I like the collage behind you. Guruji oh, okay. is there, Maharaj is there. Ramana, Srinanda Mayama. Very nice. Beautiful. Mm, but I would like to have a picture of you and that on it as well. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Can I go slowly? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. I just just walked outside and every time I walk outside I always look at the birds and think I mean, there's nothing happening <laughs> I just try to know that like first there's nothing happening and there's a noticing the last three days that it's been something's been very panicky and remembering that the one that's not true, you and the one speaking now um, has nowhere to go anymore. The walls are gone, the ceiling's gone, everything's gone. And uh, there's strong um, thoughts coming that are grabbing 
and would so much like to expose it. It's always everybody else has got it. Everybody huh. else has got it. Um, when I look at the screen and I look at all the beautiful beings yeah. and they're so relaxed and they're smiling and they have their eyes closed. There's a, an eye that wants to be like them. There's a noticing that I'm looking again too personal and uh, not looking from my true place. At this moment, Father, it doesn't feel very pleasant. I don't know why I can't relax the body. Um, there's a noticing because when one woke up in the morning, just even if I didn't understand anything, just closed my eyes and just knew that knew that place where to go to, and then watched the rest of the day. This one speaking on the screen, and I was able to always stay that one. But now I'm. Um, I am the one in the in the dream. That's what it feels like. So when I close my eyes, I just it it's it's uh it's as if I'm in the dream right now. And then don't know what to do. Can't sit still. The mind's going so fast. I watch also Garuchi at the same time. Like I watch the news that signs that are out. Yeah. And the, the one that was just out, really. Uh, I see everything is just for me anyways. Everything is just meant for me because it's my world. And I know everything's speaking to me. And I watch Garuchi and I hear him saying, how long are you going to identify? Yeah. And every time that happens, I see the little tricks during the day, even messages coming in, pulling me into identification. Um, and he just had to go sit with it and can't sit anymore. Just can't sit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's noticing, I don't know how to explain this, but I was watching the retreats the last few days, the old ones that I was with Guruji, and they were making so much sense that I could see from my true place that this one is non-existent. It doesn't exist. And why am I speaking from here right now? And when it when this happens right now, I'm gonna I go on a mad rush writing to Isha. I'm in the head. How do I get back into awareness and watching it? This one likes to talk too much. It's fine. It's fine. So, okay. So, what's coming here is that it almost sounds like there's a war going on. Yes. There's a war going on. And obviously, you're tired as if you're a soldier in the war. Yes. That so, is father. The thing is that there is no war going on. The war is only between two compartments in the head. You see, so there's a spiritual compartment of the head which says, "Okay, now you have to be in your true place. You are not being in the true place. Please come to the true place. This was the true place. This was the false place. Then there's an aspect of you which is, which is the other part of the mind. The mind which says everybody else seems to be getting it. Why are you not getting it? How come they are smiling and happy? And what's wrong with you?" So can can we see at least first to start with that both of these aspects are just aspects of the mind and therefore just using thoughts to propose the nature of your reality right now. Can we see this? Yes, Father. So this idea that you have to be a certain way and only then you are free is also just an idea from the mind. And it, it is making you tired. It is visible that you're tired because you're fighting a war, but the war is only in the head. What it do I do? What will thing. happen is, what will happen uh, is that the mind will try to use even this to make this, what I'm saying, as part of the same war. To say, ah, Ananta said, 
uh, that you're too much um, uh, uh, in the war and you must get out of the war. So it will use that in the spiritual aspect in the compartment of your head and say, now I must get out of the war. You see? So what is the way to be out of the war? It's no one open and empty, but how to be open and empty right now, Father, because I've been in the head thinking for two days and when this voice, I know this voice that's speaking right now is a false voice because it starts to shake. How to become, how to witness this, how to go back to being the witness. For, for one week till we meet next, you have yes. to fit all spirituality. What does that mean? Like forget everything that you heard in satsang. Forget about it. Do I stop watching it? Forget about everything. You can watch it, but don't remember what you hear. Don't try to use what you hear. Just watch it as if it's music. But that's so challenging because... <laughs> it's not challenging. It's just like... How to, how to watch it. If they, they hear it as, way. If, as if you don't understand the language. I don't understand Yes, that's it. That's how to do it. <laughs> that's how to do it. Father, but it, I don't want to live like this. This is like right now I'm been in a very big panic. Because I, it feels like I'm on the screen. Like I'm all, I'm hearing Guruji. How do I stop? How do I stop listening to Guruji? You must listen to Guruji, but don't try to execute what he's saying through your head, you see. He is speaking to your heart. He is doing a mind bypass, isn't it? Now, if you take everything that he's saying and make it things in your mind, then that that will just become part of this war. So you're just at war with yourself. You see, two aspects. I never did before. It just late, just lately it's been. It's it's the one speaking, and it's always the one speaking. Even my son says that because he follows you as well. He, he says, so it's the one speaking that's the problem. You need to be quiet. You need to watch to that one. It's not the one speaking. It's really what you're believing. In here. So if you're just expressing what you're believing, then sometimes we may say, okay, who is speaking? Who is speaking this? Is it? But what that means is, what what is it that you are really believing about yourself? Now, I'm this person. <laughs> so, right now, what is your heart saying? I can't hear it, Father. It, it's like... Give it time. Don't worry. Don't rush. How to hear I'm them? very panicky at the moment, Father. I can't, I can't even sit still. We start pacing back and forth. Oh. Do you remember the first time we spoke and you brought me to that place that I was able to see myself as a space and not the person? Yes, but if... Okay, anyway, so we'll just uh, um, look at it this way. Everything that is being said by your mind. Allow it to go. Tell me where the difficulty is. In the body. Your mind is saying this? No, it's just like, there's a restlessness because uh, I'm thinking. So allow, expose your next thought as it comes and allow it to go. Okay. There's so many thoughts. Yes, but they can only come one at a time. They come pretty brutal sometimes, like hopelessness. How are you going to live this way? Look at you. You're on the bed. You're shaking. You might as well die. Things like that come, I'll be honest, at this moment. Because I don't know who I am anymore. So 
they're coming so strong. And, and who's, who's looking at these thoughts? I don't know. So it's not you? No, it's easy when you say it now. So who's looking at it now? Oh, no. So it's not you. It's not the one speaking. Who's the one speaking? Can you see that one? It's not true. <laughs> then how can it speak, my dear? It's easy, Father, when it's speaking like this, but then it, the, the sign closes and what to do because it's been it's, the day is spent sitting like this trying to get back into the heart how do I take this with lightness and and Who's speaking? There's nothing happening. We're just living in the head. Father, I look at all these beautiful faces right now. I just look at them. I look at Judith and I look at Stephanie and Mooney and Peter and and there's something covering for them to see them as myself, my heart. And they're so relaxed and they're just sitting there just with themselves. Are you able to distinguish between the head and the heart? Always, but not at this moment, not the last little bit. So let's start now. How the head to come and go. It's good to breathe. It's good to breathe. <laughs> what you are doing then is good. Just breathe. It's okay. I'm afraid, Father. There's something very afraid. <laughs> notice everything that you uh, report. Notice if it is a thought or it's intuition. It's thoughts coming. So that which is a thought, you just let it go. It felt in the body like it starts to. It starts to come in a very bad panic. I don't want to keep the story anymore. Anything that's a thought, you'd let it go. Um, how come when when this is happening, just staying here, the body gets is very tense. Is this a thought? No, but it's uh, I it can't sit still. It's the thought being believed in and creating it in my reality. Is this a thought? Yes. Let it go. Everything. Let it go. 
don't value any thought for a few minutes don't value any thought father at this moment i just want to go lay down at your feet and leave this I'm so tired of this burden <laughs> at my feet only means one with me in the heart yes it is always with you my heart is always with you and just showing you that uh, as you let go of the hair the heart will become so apparent to you so we had to do that it's it's very simple actually it's your natural state if you can call it that and only the head is trying to convince you otherwise and the head can only try to sell it to you one thought at a time but if you continue to value its report about you then it will be as if your heart is not clear to you or it's not visible to you what's coming up the thoughts when they come up it's become it's a forgetting that i'm looking at them staying as the witness of them forget about everything just let go of one thought at a time that's all forget about trying to be the witness forget about any spiritual position everything don't have to hold on to anything at all feels um, like I have nowhere to stand on at the moment. Another thought, just let it go. don't know how to describe the sensation you don't that that's the best thing don't describe don't define anything at all but it doesn't feel relaxing and don't worry about relax just forget everything just let the thought go that's all it's um i had it thought <laughs> I don't know how to ask this because this is all
how do I stop the thoughts coming so like they're they're not being looked at. They're just um, um, there's a there's a trying of a, of of an attention inside to come away from the thoughts. A way to place the attention. You feel like your attention is too much going to the thoughts. Yes, very much lately. Okay. Do you want to want me to give you a sort of tool or mechanism to help you with this? Please, please, because right now it's just yes. Okay. If have you ever tried to keep your attention on your breath? How did that work? Everything's been working fine, but I'm going to expose something, and I believe this is what it is. So there is a noticing that this one grabs a lot. And um, grabs a lot. And, and uh, saw um, there's a saying that I've heard that the wave cannot hold on to another wave. It's got to sink down to the bottom. And this wave that is speaking now is going from um, one another is, is grasping at other Sangha members because there is a I, I posted it the other day. There is this there is this want and need to be in a Sangha with, an, with another and um, noticed that, reached out to a Sangha member but was looking at her not as myself, but my heart, but as a person of wanting a friend and, and, and being personal instead of being in my relationship with God. And I sat down and said, this is about God. You know, this is about the Lord of the universe who, who I am one with. And it's realizing that there's too much attention going to the imaginary one. She's gotten way too much attention, too much energy. And I can't help but speak of Guruji because he's been my best friend all these years and I hear him speaking and he keeps saying you're giving it spiritual muscles. I keep hearing him saying that. And you have to stay as the being. Just want to be open and empty. Yes. Who's so speaking is? And many, um, when I started sharing that song, I used to often say that uh, my arch nemesis is the checker guy. I don't know if you ever heard uh, such somewhere. No. Now the checker guy is the aspect of the mind which 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 hears the words in satsangs and and uses them to oppress you. you yes. So, so so what happens is that if I say just bring your attention to your breath, then the checker guy will take that on and say, ah yes yes yes, this is what you have to do, and then tomorrow. You know, it'll say, no, you're doing it so badly. Father, it said, keep your attention on the breath. So that aspect of your mind, which tries to be your spiritual helper, your spiritual guide, but still the mind, that is the... Can't overdrive, yes. That is the checker guy, which which uh, uh, the only antidote for, in a way, is to meet me in the heart. Because everything that I say to you, that checker guy will take and say, ah, you're not doing this well, you're doing this. So it uses the spirituality of satsang itself, what you heard in all satsangs, to oppress you with, instead of help you become open, become empty. You see? So what is being, um, what is causing you all this suffering and all this trouble is this checker guy, which is saying, 
you're not like this, you should be like that, then you just said this, and then you said like that. You see, so it's using all of that to just trouble you with this so-called spirituality, whereas real spirituality is just meant to make you open, just open you up, not to oppress you mentally, trying to get you to be a certain way, try to get you to be um, like other Sangha members or some notions like that. That has nothing to do with any of this. Now, the only way to be free from that check guy, because it sounds spiritual, it sounds like it's saying the truth, it is using the words that is heard in satsang, but it's actually the spiritual ego, which then wants to take it, take the words on and make them your own in some way. But that is not what the words are for. The words are so that you can leave that aspect of your being. Let it be. Let it say whatever it is saying. And be free from all that. Saying a lot. Okay, at this moment now, the attention to here. How do I stay? Like, how to become open and empty and be aware and, and stay there in the silence? Just for a few days, maybe you can just keep your attention with your breath as much as is natural without it becoming compulsive or, or like a practice that you have to do 100% well or something like that. Just lightly, lightly, whenever you remember, just keep your attention with your breath. Just with the in-breath and out-breath. And just allow it to just unfold in the most natural way. Don't judge how well you're doing. Don't... Uh, don't judge whether it's going well or badly. No judgment, just the breath. Just be concerned with the breath, that's all. It feels like a, a deluded state, if that makes sense. Feels like a which state? A deluded state. Deluded, that's okay. It's okay. I'm just getting you to relax a bit with this. If we drive ourselves into a spiritual frenzy, then... That's what's happened in the last few days. And so if we drive ourselves into a spiritual frenzy by belief in spiritual concepts from the spiritual aspect of our mind, then that is not, it is. <laughs> that is not in service to your reality. So if you just allow your attention to be with your breath for a few days, maybe you come out of this sort of frenzied state. Where what I'm pointing to is actually very effortless and natural, but but in the frenzy it can seem very difficult and confusing and difficult to hold on to. But it's even troubles them at this moment to sit and do that. Say again. It's a, a seeming challenge at the moment to even do that. To just stay with the breath is also seeming difficult. Yes. Yes. What seem, what in the past, with all your experience of so much spirituality, what seems to have helped you in the past? Not giving the energy to the one that was speaking now. It was, it was always waking up and just meditating on the one who I am. And then it was almost seemed like a gap, I don't know if that makes sense. I was able to see her, him, the one speaking now further. Yes. But now there's such a habit of speaking and uh, a relationship of being that one again. So the exploration into who witnesses that one is helpful, you feel, is easier to do? The witness is, is so helpful. Okay, then this is very good. Very good. Because it, it pulls back the attention to my true place and it's 
you know, I was able to watch these at Sands and laugh, really laugh at the one I'm talking on the screen and say, she's taking her part too seriously. And me and my son would start laughing. And now it's being taken, that's me and that's not who I am. It's being fed a lot. Yes, so use that, use that tool to remind yourself and find out who's the witness of all of this. Father, you said you said that it's good that this is happening because the one speaking is not true. Did I say like that? Yes. I have very bad memory of the things I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, the first time we spoke, it, it was the same thing, the panic, and then we, we guided, and, it was, and I could see it's the imagination that's being affected, and to stay as a space, and that's what really was so beneficial, was to see who I am as a space, the space of awareness. But now the attention so much has been on the imaginary one, forgetting I'm the space. I'm not the one speaking. So uh, my full full blessings are with you. Follow that which has helped you in your uh, quest so far, and follow your heart in terms of what is it specifically. If you feel like. Uh, the question about what witnesses this or who witnesses this will help you, that of course is very beautiful. She has to go. There's a, she has to go and there's a terrifying fear of being in that space of who I am, like following the invitation or just She's grasping to hold on this, this imaginary one and not enough being. Does that make sense? Don't worry, don't worry about making sense. Just you said that it's helpful to uh, check what witnesses all of this. So check who is the witness of all of this. That's where the, um, there's a scene because the attention is getting pulled so much in the mind stream. And it starts to spin really fast sometimes. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense. It, the mind stream is spinning, 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 racing. Full, full, uh, full blessings. Guruji's grace will take care of everything. Father, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's scaring me when you're talking like that. Scaring you? No, <laughs> why should it scare? Because it sounds like he is a bit tired now, so that's why it's okay. not that forceful. And lion mode is off at the moment. I'm sorry. I, I've been teasing them saying lion mode comes on sometimes these days and when the body is tired then the lion mode lion mode comes off. So lion mode is off now, the body is a bit tired. So, but, uh, I don't want the psychological mind, I don't want to be in that. I want to watch that and not have it affect who I am anymore. Yes. Thank you, Father. How are you doing? Hey. Thank you, thank you. Let's go to the last one for today. Mukti, you can come with me.
Do you want to come, my dear? Yes. Hi, Father. Hello. <laughs> I have so I have so much love for you, Father. You have no idea. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Father, I wanted to ask you yeah. about the mind and stuff. I'm in the streets right now. I'm sorry. No way. No. The mind is a mechanism, right? Like it's not it's not a real person, it's an it's not an entity, it's a bundle of thoughts, right? That's right, exactly. exactly. It's not like a tangible me, is it's like more energy than anything else, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I love you, Father. I just mm-hmm. wanted to come up here with you for a moment mm-hmm. and just get go at your feet, bow yeah. at your feet, and keep my head there, you know? Can you keep my head there, Father? It's here in my heart, my dear. Okay. All my love. I love you so much. I have so much love for you. It's infinite. Like, my heart is, my heart is exploding right now. Oh, it's so sweet. Big, big hug. Love you. Yeah. Full love. I love you. Okay, I'm going to mute myself now. Where are you walking? Where is this? What city is this? I'm walking to the bus stop right now. I'm going to my house with my boyfriend. You want to see him? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Say hi. Hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. And you? Good? I'm good. Where, where, yeah. where are you guys? What city is this? Where, where are we right now? Yeah. Where are we? No, I'm in the city with Huh? Are you in New well, York? Probably, I'm in New York. Yeah, New York. Good, good. good. Yeah. You always live I there. Hope, first I hope to see you one day, Father, in in Bangalore, though. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. How do I get there? I have to look up like the how to get there and stuff. Like when I get out of the airport to Bangalore, I want to figure it out. Yes, you can. There should be. Um, you have to take a flight maybe to um, Europe or to the Middle East and then uh, come to Bangalore from there. There are two flights. You'll have to probably change the flight. Uh, two flights? Two flights? You'll have to take two flights. Like my son just went to America because he's studying there. So yeah. He had to stop first in Abu Dhabi in the uh, Middle East and then he's flying to America from there, to Chicago. Okay, father. <laughs> So, okay. I will is. probably go. I have to work first. I have to start working and saving my money up so I could go to Bangalore. Can oh, I stay in a guest room or like in a hotel? He'll organize something. You come, don't worry. <laughs> okay. Can I come with my boyfriend? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We're gonna go to, end, to my- Bangalore. <laughs> okay, bye father. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that sweet end to such an Is that our bus? Oh no, is that 103rd? Is this the 101?
Thank you all so much for being in Satsang today. Sadhguru Shri Moji Baba Ki Jai. Sadhguru Shri Moji Baba Ki Jai. Sadhguru Kripa Kripa.